The President Trump has granted full pardons to 15 people and commuted part or all of the sentence of an additional five people. Most notably, the list includes former representatives Chris Collins and Duncan Hunter, and a name that you probably haven't heard since the Robert Mueller investigation, George Papadopoulos. Now, Papadopoulos was an unpaid foreign policy advisor to candidate Donald Trump and was the first campaign advisor arrested as part of Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Uh, he was sentenced to 14 days incarceration after pleading guilty to making false statements to FBI agents about his correspondence with Russian nationals. Collins, a former representative from New York, was the first member of Congress to endorse Trump in the 2016 election and was indicted in August of 2018 for alleged insider training. He began serving a 26-month prison sentence back in October. Former California Representative Duncan Hunter pleaded guilty in December of 2019 to one count of conspiracy over his alleged misuse of $250,000 in campaign donations for personal expenses such as family vacations and to allegedly finance extramarital affairs. His wife filed for divorce just two weeks ago. He was sentenced to 11 months in prison in March and, the one, and he once called the investigation into him a politically motivated witch hunt. Now, there has been speculation in recent weeks that President Trump could move to pardon members of his own family. This will, of course, be something to watch in the president's last 29 days in office. Let's go now to our Rachel Scott. Rachel, the White House has been hinting at taking some of these actions, several of these names, allies of the president, of course. Yeah, allies to the president. This is the first full batch of pardons that we are seeing coming from President Trump since after the election. We know a few weeks prior to this, he did pardon his first national security advisor, Michael Flynn, who our team has been reporting, has been back at the White House, uh, publicly urging the president to use martial law to try and overturn the results of the election and challenge the results in battleground states that the president lost. But some familiar th names there, Lindsay, as you said, George Papadopoulos, who was convicted for lying during the Mueller investigation. Investigation. You obviously are seeing a lot of allies to the president, people that have been fierce defenders of him over the course of his last four years. But I think the bottom line here, Lindsay, is what this really does show is that President Trump, while he has refused to concede this election, he does recognize that he is on his way out. This is something that outgoing presidents do. The president is also issuing appointments left and right. He has issued more than 100 appointments since losing the election. The president clearly recognizes that his days left are numbered, Lindsay. Rachel Scott, thanks so much. More from you in a little bit in the show. And let's bring in now senior editorial producer John Santucci. It sounds like he may not be finished. Potentially more pardons still to come. Oh, uh, Donald Trump's Christmas list has only just begun, Lindsay. Good evening. We're understanding that there could be another wave before the holiday and before the president uh, is set to head off to Mar-a-Lago to begin his Christmas vacation uh, tomorrow. And then right after the New Year, Lindsay, our sources are telling ABC News that there could be a very long list to come. Donald Trump's White House has been called by many individuals over the last couple of weeks. And the other thing that we're tracking, Lindsay, is the possibility that President Trump could preemptively pardon members of his family, some of his White House aides, and even him himself. He has been urged to do this by his advisors and allies for the last several days. And that's in part, Lindsay, because they believe that when the Joe Biden administration comes in, there could be vulnerabilities there. We have heard Sean Hannity and other uh, conservative media allies of the president on their programs saying that another witch hunt could be coming to the Trump family. Don't know yet, Lindsay, if that's on the list for the Trump pardons. Right. It sounds like Rudy Giuliani may be included in that as well. A lot of these pardons, of course, uh, were expected. Any of these names come as a surprise, John? None of the names, Lindsay, necessarily. I think that what we're seeing is the tea leaves of what's to come. I, I, obviously, uh, the most controversial group on this list, there, there's some of them have a, a controversy, but I think the group that many are going to dig into uh, is a group that President Trump was getting lobbied on directly uh, by their families and friends on Fox News, and that is these four individuals uh, tied to Blackwater. This is a private security firm. They were tied uh, to the 2007 killing of 17 uh, Iraqi civilians. 
um, and uh, some of them had actually just been sentenced uh, to life in prison uh, about a year ago. But their friends and allies have been on Fox News. They uh, received a lot of attention from commentators on Fox uh, who have been lobbying on their behalf, um, but certainly going to raise uh, some eyebrows. What we're also seeing tonight, Lindsay, is the coming attractions of the Mueller investigation. We know President Trump uh, has uh, railed against that investigation since it began in 2017. We know he has pardoned his longtime uh, advisor and confidant, Roger Stone, over the summer, and Michael Flynn uh, just in the last several weeks. But tonight, two more people uh, on that list have been granted presidential pardons, uh, and that includes Alex Vanderswan and George Papadopoulos, uh, someone the president had at one point said he did not know and was never connected to, but getting a pardon. So the coming attractions there, Lindsay, do we see Paul Manafort, um, who is obviously uh, the, the biggest victim, if you will, of the Robert Mueller investigation. He was sentenced to seven years behind bars. He was released due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but still has uh, that hanging over his head, only had served a little over a year and a half in jail. Um, our sources believe that could be another person we might see on another round of Trump pardon. Yeah, so it sounds like stand by for news to be. Continue, John Santucci, thanks so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.